time to go for a walk. Said I'd make a video about uh, this pets of my wife's called Quail. And uh, so I figured I'll come out here and take a walk and uh, show you what's going on with this whole idea. Like I said, she raises uh, quail. We have a little over 200 at the moment. And uh, this is our greenhouse. That's the roof. We're getting ready to change the plastic. That plastic's been on there for, geez, well over 10 years. Maybe more. Not quite sure. So uh, it's time to change it. So we're going to change the plastic here uh, as soon as it, we get no wind. All right. So now we're to the front of the uh, greenhouse, which is actually just a uh, shelter king. Let's see if I can get this camera to flip. All right, now we're at the uh, greenhouse, uh, and we're at the front of the greenhouse here. Right now, here in the state of Washington, we live in Olympia, Washington, and uh, it's getting quite warm for us, so uh, we keep the door open all the time. And we'll head on in here. This is a number one pen, we call it. It was the first one we built like this. It's made out of a dog kennel, a seven by seven foot dog kennel. And then we covered it with a half inch chicken wire to keep the little predators out. Um, we live next to a field. Sometimes we get some field rats or mice and stuff like that. So kind of helps keep them out. Here's our pen. We've got our daughter made that feeder there for us. It uh, seems to be working quite well. Um, right now we have 42 quail in there. And uh, they seem to be quite happy. Seems like we uh, um, we use a deep bedding. That's uh, over a foot, a foot deep. And uh, it composts quite well. It gets really warm underneath there, but it composts quite well. And uh, we use that for fertilizer on the garden. Over here is uh, what we call pin 2. Uh, pin 2 we built ourselves. We built it out of cedar uh, boards. They're 1x4s. This, this pin over here is 65 by 65 feet because that's what the boards I had. So that's what we used. And we wanted a little more space for storage back here in the corner. So that gave us that little bit extra, that half foot, just what we needed. Here's our watering system. Just a bucket, five gallon bucket set on top of another five gallon bucket. And then we got uh, just some little tubes running down to the, we use a float type heart cup. It, uh, when it gets low, it automatically fills up and it shuts itself off. We've tried the other type that use the, um, a uh, little trigger where they tap on it and they get a little drop of water uh, but we found that the quail tend to play with it too much and we're just wasting more water this way they come over get a drink and then they're good to go we do get a little algae build up so about once a week uh, every two weeks I have to blow those lines out and it just real easy my wife goes in the pen triggers the cups one at a time and we just blow I blow some water through there and voila Oh, we do run just a, oh, maybe a cap or two of uh, vinegar in our water. That's to help with uh, coccidiosis that sometimes uh, we have found in our quail. So uh, that takes care of that problem. This is pin two. We're running a heat lamp in here for because we just moved some quail in here uh, Friday. We moved 98 quail in here. And... Uh, Seems like they were wanting to pack a little bit, so this stopped that problem. We're running a little extra water in there for them, just till we get by, uh, till they get till they get used to the the waterers that we have, and then we'll just we'll take that out. And again, we have another feeder back there and another feeder there. We just want to make sure they have enough feeder. Uh, we also run uh, there's eight chuckers in there, chucker partridges, red-legged chucker partridges, which has uh, been quite a joy, quite a, quite a lot of fun to have. There's one right up on top. They jump and they fly. Uh, there's also, there he is. He's right down there, flapping his wings. We have two Reeves uh, pheasants in here. They haven't come into their adult plumage yet because they're only about, uh, oh, what are they, a couple months old. 
So there's a male and there's a female. We just happen to get fortunate about that idea. So that's the quail. Over here we have uh, she uh, from inside with our brooders. We uh, when the quail get moved out, she cleans out the brooders. But it uh, seems like the shave wood shavings that we use uh, are a little damp, so she brings them out here in the greenhouse and lets it dry. And then she'll put that back in those little cubbies in the back for uh, kind of like a nesting box in a sense. And that helps to uh, keep everything drier and adds to the compost. All right, let's head on back here to the pheasant pen. Uh, here's some compost here. There's some others she's drying out. And uh, in here is the pheasant pen. We have uh, eight ornamental pheasants. No, take it back. Five ornamental pheasants. And uh, no, eight. Eight ornamental pheasants and five guineas in here. They are jumbo guineas. They've been quite a lot of fun. All right, in here, we'll find the guineas back there. There's a pheasant in there. There's another pheasant over here. We got one over here that is uh, just starting to come into some uh, more of adult plumage. And uh, this is their little pen. We just, we made this out of uh, fencing. And then we're using that half inch uh, chicken wire across the roof. We had these uh, uh, posts right there that we used to use for another project. And uh, this has worked quite well. It's uh, very cheap, very inexpensive. Uh, that pin back there was actually a quail pin back when we first started. Uh, we used to raise quails in pins like that on the floor. Over here is another one. This is another pin that we had built. Uh, I had that set up for automatic watering and uh, has a door on it and stuff but um, we used to raise uh, quail in that pen as well now we do it in two bigger pens we have our uh, breeder slash layer pen and um, grow out pen and we do all this because my wife has uh, extreme allergies to grass and she's always wanted to raise quail all her life didn't know why now we found out why because quail eggs is uh, very good for the whole idea of allergies and that's what got us into raising quail and lo and behold uh, quail are actually very good to eat so uh, that worked out well oh by the way I made a comment on uh, black pack video uh, on the comments that we had a uh, quail escape. Uh, we found her this morning. She was right there. My wife had made a hole through the fence right down there. So because she flew out, she flew across the fence and went in this real thick spot right here. Went that real thick spot between the fence and the field. And um, so she made that little hole down down here, and a little quail came out and was right there this morning when we we found her, and so my wife got her butterfly net out and we caught her, and now she's back with everybody else. So life is good. Once again for the quail. All right, this is how my wife she has made it from the pheasant pen over back to the quail pen, and this is what we mean by stirring the compost up or the bedding. And she does this so uh, we don't get a buildup on their feet of uh, manure. And this works really well. Plus she can build it up a little bit down here where the heart cups are. So that way the little babies can reach the water a little bit better. And uh, But she likes to go through and she talks to the quail and has a good time with them. Okay, and here she goes into this pen to uh, into number, what we call number one. As you can see over here, let me get back to number two here for just a second. As you can see how that is now piled up in the center because she's already went through and cleaned it all up. They've got water, they've got feed. All we gotta do is come back out later and we'll turn the light on for them and they should be good to go. Now we're back over here to number one. And uh, as you can see, she's working her way around and she'll go all the way around this pen to uh, 
stir so we don't get that build up of poo on their feet. It's more important for these older birds than it is for the younger ones. We seem to have more of a problem in that area uh, just because of the amount of poo that these bigger birds put out. So uh, that's how she does that. I think I mentioned the water over here, how I did the tubes. We get a little bit of algae buildup, so about every week or two, I come, we come in here and I blow those lines out, and that seems to work out pretty well. So there she is, she's going around the corner. Over here, here's one of our Reeves pheasants, it's a female. We think, we're not quite sure, we don't know how to tell. It's something we've never raised before as pheasants, so uh, it's kind of cool. It's a lot of fun. They talk a lot. So back over here, there's a broken one she found. Not sure how that got broke, but uh, probably because probably because she got in here and was working around. So yeah, it's all right. Anyway, so that ends the tour of quail, the quail barn or quail greenhouse, I should say. And that's our operation. Um, hope you liked it. Yeah, that's how we do it. Um, if you're wondering about this uh, greenhouse and how hot it gets in there, uh, yesterday we had an outside temp of over 80. Inside temp inside the greenhouse was 108. So the quail did just fine. We had no additional fans on. We just left the doors open. Natural ventilation. They were fine. Keep water in there. They were just fine. No problems at all. We're not seeing any problem of... Uh, uh, egg laying, they're, they're staying right in, in our breeder pen here, they're staying up with laying, so uh, no problem there. Uh, as long as you keep water and food to them, plenty of fresh water, they'll be just fine. So, uh, hope you enjoyed, take care.